Today we continue in our study of John chapter 15. This book that reveals Jesus as God the Son. And we look today at how Jesus is our life. But before we read this fifth first 14 verses of this 15th chapter, we want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, thank you we can trust you today, that you love us, that you're always concerned about providing the things that we need in our life. So that, Lord, when we stand before you, that we're going to be without excuse that we're not going to say we didn't have opportunity to meet the challenges of our life because our strength was not enough, though it is not enough. And that we didn't know what to do, and we don't know what to do sometimes, and we <clears throat> were insufficient for the task. Because you live within us. And you want to work your will in our life. And though we are not perfect and sinless in this life, and old, the old nature is ever present there, and may we never uh, diminish the truth of the Scripture about it. May we always be on guard against it. But Lord, thank you that, and help us to believe that you are there that you're in us and with us and can be a part of what we do in our life every day. May the truth of the Word of God impact our lives to the good and the will and the blessing and the praise of our Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And this is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruits, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I love you, Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. The context is so very, very, very important in finding out what God's Word says. It is so in any book that we interpret, and it is especially true because God is always able to arrange material in the way that He wants. 
wants it to. And his wisdom is so great and so marvelous that we must, we must learn to trust the context. And so we have here what is in chapter 15 of John explains this new thing that he's just told them in chapter 14. And what is in 14 <clears throat> must be seen in the light of this life that he talks about that exists in this relationship between the vine and the branches in chapter 15. And this just emphasizes what we talked about last time in chapter 14. That this life, this new relationship, this coming back again to be with you, because I live, ye shall live. This new relationship that was going to begin in the church age in the heart of every believer is not going to happen at the second coming of Christ. His coming back again is at the second coming. His coming back again is what happens in John 15. And this new relationship of the vine and the branches and what we have done and how we have missed the emphasis of this truth, we have went to John 15 and said, yes, we need to uh, uh, have this relationship with Christ and, and be part of Him and Him part of us. But we have disconnected it with what He said in John 14, and therefore we have not put the things together and helped see the truth of both the chapters together, and we must do that. And if you do that, it is unmistakably true that his going away uh, in this new resurrected life, changing the fact that he was a man and, and limited to a human body and, and he had purposely limited the expression of his, his deity. It was still there, but he had covered it over and limited so that Jesus, while he was on earth, was only present one place at one time, doing one miracle at one moment in one day. But now, because he can, as God, be manifest everywhere at the same time, he can be present in the heart of his children everywhere. And he can do his work uh, a million times over in a moment of time. And so we see the importance of the context. And we see what is taught here. And here is the answer to every spiritual need and, and a lot of the rest of the needs that we will ever have. Here's the answer to any need you'll ever have, Christian. We will never be able to stand before God and say, we could not do what you wanted us to do because we didn't have enough strength or enough wisdom or enough power or, or we couldn't control the circumstances of our life and we can't do any of those things. We don't have the wisdom and we don't have the power and we don't have the strength. But there is one that lives within us that does, if we believe this book. The very God that created everything and the God that died for us on the cross, God's Son, He lives within us and the Spirit of God that, that, that uh, moves and convicts and teaches heart, He lives within us. And our Heavenly Father that administrates the, the office of the deity, our one God, Manifest in three persons. He lives within our hearts. And yes, He is manifested in that place that we call heaven. But He's also manifested in any other place in the world that He wants to be. Not in that visible way. We do not see the glory and the light shining from our hearts. But His presence is there and He he abides and reveals Himself to us and is part of us in a special way. And Jesus in John 17, as we're going to see, ties it in just as He and the Father are one. So we have His spiritual life at salvation and, and Him and the Father are one with us in that same special, unique, binding, close relationship. 
And I am amazed how many Christians do not understand and do not believe that the person of Jesus lives within their life. Now they know the Holy Spirit's there and they know that depending on Him to do His work is an important function of their life. A lot of them do, though they don't necessarily do that. But we have to understand this, that Jesus is in us and we can do the will of God not by learning enough in our own wisdom, though we do need to study, and that's part of how He is loosed in our life and how He can work in our life. Not by our efforts, not by our maturity, not because we have been a Christian and, and, and we've been on earth a long time. Not because we knock on a hundred doors this week, although it wouldn't be a bad idea to talk to a hundred people about Jesus if God had prepared those people and he was using that witness in a hundred people's life. It would be a marvelous thing to do. But you know, we have come to believe that we do the work for God instead of Him doing the work through us. And there's all the difference in those things in the world. And God won't do the work except He does it through us. That's why He planned and purposed and accomplished this special relationship in our Christian lives that the person of the Godhead the Spirit and the Son and the Father would all live within us. And because this, the Lord Jesus is our Savior and our mediator and our link between God and man, the Spirit of God manifests Him in our life, but it is His particular work and purpose to provide the spiritual life that is within the heart of the belief. And we see that here. And so we say today, that Jesus is your life. And why must you understand that? Why must you believe that? That Jesus is your life. That He lives within you. And it's possible that He can live, uh, uh, be the power source for everything that God wants you to do in your life. And why must we understand that? We must understand that in verse 1 through 5 because He is in us. He is in you. And here Jesus describes this relationship. We are the branches and He is the vine. And here we have verses 1 through 5. And we have the fact that the life is in the vine. The life doesn't originate in the branches. The branches are connected to the vine. The branches have no life except they're part of the main vine. The vine, though, doesn't produce the fruit. The vine isn't where the, the fruit is born. The vine is just the, the main tuber and, and conductor of life to the branches. And, and, but the life is in the vine and not the branches. And it flows through the whole, it flows through the whole system. The life of the vine goes into the branches and bears the fruit that's present in the life of the vine. And how that Jesus, Jesus works with the branches and, the, and that he, he purges the branches and he lifts them up and he protects them that they might bear more fruit in verse 2. He purges it. He cleanses it. He keeps the fruit clean and he, he takes care of the branches. And he's, uh, he's concerned about this relationship. And so we are told to abide in him and he in us. Now what does that mean? Abide in him. It means that we are dominated by the life that lives within us. Now Jesus won't force that on you. It won't happen automatically. It won't happen uh, uh, 
though I do not know how a really saved person could could not be impacted at all by the person of Christ and the person of the Holy Spirit that lives within them. You've, there's got to be a difference, and there is a difference in a Christian because of the very fact that Jesus is there. But but the life of the uh, Jesus won't be forced on you. You have two natures. We have an old nature and a new nature, and we must decide which nature is going to rule. You see, who's on the throne of your life? Who's the authority in your life? How are you making the decisions of your life? What are the desires that are controlling your life? Is it that your wants and your uh, decisions and your plans be made and done? Or is it that God's will and His plans and His decisions? Are you trusting in in what He has said? Are you living by faith? Are you depending on Him to do the work in, in your heart? And I have learned and am beginning to practice more that when I am in a situation where I understand that I need the special help of Jesus, maybe I'm especially uh, bombarded by circumstances, I'm discontented, I'm beginning to get uh, anxious about taking care of a problem or doing a work in my own ability, then I, I say, Lord Jesus, you're in me and you help me in this situation. We need to rest and remain and receive the life of the vine. What a terrible waste it would be if the God of glory lived within a person and they never let him live his life through them. What a terrible waste that will be. We're going to see the result of the waste of that. And that only can occur when we do not appropriate the life of the vine. Now, in, in, in a vine and a branch, there is no cutoff valve on the branch that the branch can reach over and say, whoops, don't believe I want any life today. Boop, cut you off. But there is a cutoff valve in my life and yours. And that cutoff valve is in the decision room of our soul, our heart, our will. And we, we can by our being determined to have our own way and to guide our own life and to manipulate our own circumstances as best we can, we can live in that old nature and not the life of Christ that lives within us. But understand the relationship that we have no life and no function and no possibility of purpose and usefulness if we are not connected to the vine as branches and if we are not letting that life flow through us and do the work and produce the fruit. Understand that. That there is a relationship here and Jesus talks about it. And of course, abiding causes us to produce the fruit. And that's what he says here. You can't, and you can't bear fruit unless you abide in the vine. And this is why I say you cannot live the Christian life in your own strength. You cannot do it. It is not you that do it. It, do it. it is not Randall Pugh that's living Randall Pugh's life for Christ. If, if things are the way they ought to be. It's the God of glory in Randall Pugh that's living through him and helping him and working with him to, to live the Christian life. And that's the way we must live if we're to do the will of God and if we're to let the character and person of Jesus Christ be produced in us. And that's what God wants. And that's what he's provided in, in the relationship between the vine and the branches. He's in us and we have life because of Him. We're in Him because we've trusted Him and been saved. And our spiritual nature is a result of believing in Him. And it's His life. And those two are connected together in an inseparable way. Understand that. And then understand to fail 
we must understand that Jesus is our life because to fail to abide in his life produces death. And we see this in verse 6. It produces a condition of no fruit and no usefulness and no life. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. It's like a branch that isn't receiving the life of the tree. It's like a, a branch that isn't receiving the life of the vine for some reason. And branches uh, uh, die and they become in time disconnected from the life of the vine. And once they, they fall off and once they're dead and there is no life flowing from the vine to the branch, then that branch is, is useless. It's good for nothing. It can't bear fruit. It has no life in it. No spiritual life in it. Now, we don't believe we lose our salvation. But we certainly believe that if we do not appropriate the life of Jesus for an extended time in our Christian life, that, that we're just like, we live just like an unsaved person. And because we aren't appropriating the life of Jesus, God can't do His will in us. And, and there's almost no spiritual contact with him at all. And, and we dry up and wither and we become useless and just like the lives of unsaved people around us. And so you can see that one problem in our church and in our world is that those Christians uh, of us that are saved, and I don't know how many are saved and are if you're not saved, you can't have his life at all. But if you are saved, you do have his life within you. And you should be a living, uh, vibrant example of life, his life. But if that doesn't occur, and you wither away and dry up and fall off the vine, then, then it, there is no life in you and no fruit. And it is an indication of, of the judgment of God. And God has no choice, you see. Because if you will not receive the life of His Son that's in you to do His will and His work, He doesn't have any other way in any other life whereby you might be empowered and strengthened and used. And we need to understand that. And then I want to spend the rest of the time and perhaps the most important part of the time dealing with this fact that continuing to abide over a long period of time, over a period of time, not just a moment. Now, in a moment, we can receive and experience His life connected to the vine, the branch. But continuing that relationship of letting the life flow from the vine to the branch produces some things that, that God wants and we want and what God intended in our life. And we need to understand that in 7 through 14. And notice in verse 7. If we abide in Him, if we, and, and, and my commentary on this, if we continue abiding in Him, not just today or a week even, <clears throat> but for a couple of years, two, three, four years, then that begins to grow and emphasize and produce things that, that, uh, that we would not have otherwise. And in verse 7 he says, if, we, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. When Jesus is the spiritual source of our life, when we let his life live through us and let him live the Christian life, especially over a long period of time, we begin to know the thoughts and will of God because it's His life that's continually living through us. We want to do what God wants us to do. We learn to intuitively, we learn to know His will because we are used to being close to Him in fellowship. We are used to spending time with Him in prayer. We are used to going to His Word and saying, Father, I, I, I uh, 
uh, not the source of wisdom, and I don't understand what's right and wrong. And, and, and this book is given to me to teach me the things that I need. And, and here you have his words, the word of God, it helps in this process of abiding. And as the word of God becomes part of us, and the person of Jesus is connected uh, with the word, he's the living word that carries, that presents the what is written down in the, in the words of Scripture. And as we are part of this life for a long time, we live the way Jesus wants us to live, by letting Him through, live through us, then we begin to understand the will of God because we're close to our Heavenly Father. We talk to Him every day. He lives through us. He is our lot. And so we begin to better understand what God wants. And we're not living in our own life, predominating in that. The flesh is not the thing that's empowering our life. It's not saying we want our way and we, we know what's important and we're the ones that's smart and because we have done this and that and the other, we're somebody special to God. No. There's nothing special about us except that God lives within us and He wants to produce His life in us. And when we do that, we come to better understand God's will after a period of time because we have been letting Him live through us as a regular pattern of life and His life helps us to do that in verse 7. And it also helps us to to be molded into his character in verse 8. And the fruit here is not just people getting saved, although that would be a result of bearing fruit. The fruit here is the character of, of God produced in us. It is the very holiness and the very patience and the very love and the very long-suffering and the very goodness and the very gentleness and meekness and self-control and where are those attributes? Who, how many people can you look at and look around at that have those ninefold attributes in their life shining forth in a radiant way most of the time? I tell you that there are very few that you're impressed with that way. And that may be because we have ignored this truth and that we are so much dominated by the flesh that, that we aren't bearing very much fruit, the character and person of Jesus Christ. But that is what God wants, and that's what He can produce, and He will produce if His life is not hindered from dominating the branch. And that takes place as we let that relationship continue by choosing and asking and wanting God's will and trusting Him to do that for us and you say, how is that accomplished in every way? Is there a light switch, like a switch that you throw? Well, we're told to do many things. We're told to, to submit ourselves into His will. We're told to read and learn and study our Bibles with the right kind of attitudes. We're told to pray. We're told to put into practice trusting in Him, depending on Him. And, it, and God just does the work. I don't know how he lives through us. I just believe that the Bible says that he is living through us. And I believe that I can tell the difference sometimes between choosing what he wants and choosing what I want. And doing that produces much fruit. In fact, doing that produces his life. And that's what we have in verses 9 through 14. Continue in my love, and if you if you uh, keep my commandments, my love abides in you, even as I have kept my Father's commandments. And the love of the cross, the love that I exhibited, when I went to the cross and laid down my life for your life, that kind of love can be exhibited in you. Friend, you can do anything that God wants you to do because Jesus lives within you. Now, we don't do that all the time because of the flesh, but we can do that most of the time as a Christian. You can have God's will. You can bear His character and His life 
and all the good qualities he has can be demonstrated in and through your life. And you can have his love and his person. He can shine forth through you. A light to a darkened world. And this is what God wants. And this is what He's purpose. And this is what He's produced in the life of a Christian. If we're to live the Christian life, it must be Jesus living it and not us. And will you experience that today? By understanding God's Word, by believing what His Word says is true, and by trusting in Him to produce that life and that fruit and His will in your heart and your life. I pray.